Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of falling away. Some call it the great falling away of the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Well, I want to get out of the uh, Old Testament, but I think we ought to do a little bit more with the Old Testament because the Old Testament is the foundation of the Bible, whereas the New Testament is, I guess you could say, like the, uh, the roof, the covering, the top. So, just remember, when Israel was in bondage, slavery in Egypt, the Lord was going to prove to them, by Moses, that he was God of gods and Lord of lords and King of kings. You see, I don't understand why. I just know it is. But when the angels that sinned were cast out of heaven, they were cast out to the earth. And they're being allowed to deceive people. I mean, let's face it. If you were born, oh, I don't know, 5,000 years ago, and an angel appeared before you with bright, shining clothes, and, you know, this thing had, uh, this creature, this being had supernatural powers and could appear and disappear at will, which I'm assuming that angels can do that. I mean, wouldn't, and this thing told you that they were God, wouldn't you believe them? I mean, you know, to the average person, that didn't know the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So, here it is. Israel is in Egypt. And I did a playlist on it. I mentioned it last video. About the plagues of Egypt and how they compare and contrast the plagues of Revelation. You see, in Egypt, they had a god named Ra, R-A, Ra. He was the sun god, not the, not the son of God, but the god of the sun, the sun in the sky, S-U-N. And isn't it funny that the great majority of churches worship, well, they meet on sun day. S-U-N day, not S-O-N day. And most people believe that Sabbath is from Friday night at the going down of the sun until Saturday night at the going down of the sun. And I'm not one to argue that. I don't know if 100% that it's true, but I believe it is. Um, so, you know, why, why, why is it sun day? You know, shouldn't it be S-O-N day? I don't know. But, um, here it is. The Lord God of heaven and earth was sending a message to Ra, the sun god. And this was recorded in Exodus chapter 10. So let's take a look at Exodus tap chapter 10 when the Lord uh, basically, it's, it's a challenge to the gods of Egypt. You know, back in the Middle, uh, middle Ages, when uh, somebody would take their glove off and throw it to the ground, it was a challenge. Perhaps somebody had dishonored them 
or slandered them. And there would be a duel. Matter of fact, uh, duels were made illegal, oh, I think about 200 years ago in the United States. Duels used to be legal. Matter of fact, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, if you know those names from history, uh, I think Hamilton was president at one time. Uh, they had a duel. And then they made dueling illegal in the United States. So, I mean, you could still do a duel, but if you get caught, uh, they're going to get you for murder. So, what can I tell you? All right, let's take a look at the 10th chapter of the book of Egypt. All right, let's go to verse 20. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Boy, I tell you what, when the Lord hardens somebody's heart, oof, you got a problem. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness, darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which must, which may be felt. Boy, what kind of darkness is that? The darkness that can be felt. Oof. So, this was God throwing down the gauntlet, so to speak, throwing down the glove to Ra, the sun god of Egypt. And basically, you know, letting the children of Israel know that, uh, hey, I'm going to make darkness happen. I mean... Is there any other God in the, in the universe that can make the sun dark? And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Hmm. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Now, uh, then the Passover happens. All the firstborn in Egypt died. All the cattle that were firstborn, the dogs that were firstborn, the sheep that were firstborn, and, more importantly, the firstborn of every household. So, and then Pharaoh told him, get out of Dodge, get out of here, tired of listening and looking at you. Well, that's the Bob translation. So, and then Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. God had taken them out of Egypt. But God, in 40 years, wanted to take Egypt out of Israel. You know, that was the thing. You know, Israel had learned about the gods of Egypt and probably worshipped them. And God's a jealous God. So he's trying to get them to realize that they're his people and he wants those that are going to honor him. And that's why they wandered for 40 years in the desert. Because he's the one that supplied them with food, the manna from heaven. He's the one that supplied them with the water from the rock that Moses struck twice when he was only supposed to strike it once. 
you know, it's hard to find food and water in a desert. You know what I mean? And after all the miracles that the Lord had showed them, they, what did they do? The golden calf with Aaron. You know, <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, come on, guys. Uh, I hope everybody has read the book of Exodus because, you know, I'm kind of skimming through things because I could make this a 20 or 30 hour study if I really put my mind to it. And I really don't want to. I mean, I've covered a lot of this material in other studies. And if you're interested, let me know. I'll point you in the right direction. So, all right, let's take a look at 2 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 16. At that time did King Ahaz, A-H-A-Z, uh, not Ahab and Jezebel, no. At the time, uh, it's a different king. At the time did King Ahaz send in the, unto the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and smitten Judah and carried away captives. So they had invaded Edom, Edom had invaded and fought against Judah and then carried away slaves. I'm sure men and women. You didn't want to be a woman slave. I'm, I'm, or a man slave for that matter. You know. When I think about the women slaves, I'm thinking about Jeffrey Epstein. So, verse 18, the Philistines. I'm sorry, the Goldsteins. I'm sorry, no, the Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah and had taken Beth Shema, Shemesh and Ajalon and Gedaroth and Shoko with the villages thereof and Timnah and the villages thereof, Gimzo also and the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. For the Lord had brought Judah... For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. Now, when it's talking about Judah being naked, it's not talking about not having clothes. It's talking about not having any covering for their sin. You know, it's like in the book of Revelation when it uh, talks about um, people having garments made white in the blood of the Lamb, and then those that are don't have it. So the Lord had made Judah spiritually naked. They had no covering. They didn't have the protection of the Lord. For he had made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. And Tilgath Pelneser, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the king and of the princes and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. In other words, he probably took all the gold, some of the gold stuff out of the temple of the Lord that was dedicated for the Lord and gave it to the king of Assyria. And then the king of Assyria didn't do anything to help him. And I'm sure the Lord put it in his heart not to. And in the time of his distress, he did trespass. Trespass. That means going somewhere where you shouldn't be. Spiritual application, please. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord, that is, that king Ahaz. For he sacrificed unto the gods, plural, gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help him, therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin, but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. 
And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. Can you imagine that? He closed the doors to the Lord's house and basically nailed them shut. And shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Altars to satanic gods, right? And in every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoked the to anger the Lord God of his fathers. Not good. And the rest of his acts and of all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. And he, and they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. See, people, the point is, it's a cycle. When a group of people, a nation, uh, honors the Lord, he honors them, and he blesses them. And then when you get a country like the USSA that dishonors the Lord, um, God will send a wicked ruler. Think about Congress and our president. And uh, yeah, Donald Trump is not my savior. I'm sorry. Um, if Donald Trump's your savior, you can have him. Um, I'll admit I did vote for him because the thought of Hillary was just, oh, it was as bad as uh, having that sodomite, um, Michael and uh, Barack. Well, that's my opinion. But um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to vote anymore. If uh, somebody said, uh, I think it was Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, said that if voting changed anything, it would be illegal. And I think he's right. You know, how come we're always voting for the lesser of two evils? No. No. We should be voting for Christians only. Matter of fact, there are laws in on the books, in the constitutions of a number of states, that people had to be Christians to hold public office. So all these uh, Antichrist dual citizens, um, technically, they shouldn't even be allowed to be anything. But um, that was a story long ago and far away. All right, so you're starting to get the idea, you know, when you honor the Lord, the Lord will honor you and bless you. Well, guess what? America and Europe are in the curse stage. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. I love this chapter. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. And we know this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord. What's chastisement? Uh, it's a spanking. And which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. Now, remember, people, Egypt at this time was a mighty empire, probably the mightiest empire at that time and point in history. And, well, verse 4. And what he, God, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this 
day. And what he did unto you in the wilderness until you came into this place. And what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. Um, these people were disobedient. I don't remember exactly what their sin was, but um, the earth opened up and swallowed them up and they died. I think not sure. I could look it up, but it's not important. Just know that being obedient is important. Verse 7. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord, which he did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And they're commandments, not suggestions. Uh, therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, strong, and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it. Do you know that when the Christians first arrived on the shores of America, that there were all these heathen tribes of what they call Indians, the natives? I mean, they practiced Satanism. And cannibalism. Not all of them, but a lot of them. There was one particular tribe. I There's a book called The Light and the Glory. I can't remember the name of the author. Uh, really good book. But it records the history of the Christians were near a, a, a tribe. I mean, they were they were horribly brutal. And they didn't like the Christians, and they had vowed to kill them. And the Christians, I, I'm not, res, I don't remember exactly what. Maybe they sent an ambassador or a gift or, or whatever, or maybe it was a, an army, armed party. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what. But when they got to the village, they were all dead. All the Indians were dead. All of them. And then guess what? All the crops that the Indians had planted were all ready for harvest. And that's how they got through the winter. Oh yeah. God had sm smote them with a plague. Killed them all. And the Christians rejoiced. The Light and the Glory people, wonderful book, I wish I could remember. I, I haven't read that. and <laughs> It was in the mid-90s when I read that book, or in the 90s, late 90s, you know. So it's been over 20 years. Uh, I've read a lot of books, people. History, all kinds of stuff. But that was just one example. You know, the Christians honor the Lord, and those that oppose the Lord's people, God struck them dead and this was a large village this was a large indian village with a lot of indian braves and they were just struck down dead and all their crops were right there waiting for them for the christians to pluck the ears of corn and have and have dinner praise the lord all right Verse 9. Well, verse 8. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land which floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt from whence ye came out, where thou sowed thy seed and watered it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. 
The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass if, and it shall come to pass if, if, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commands, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Wow. Isn't that what Jesus said? The, the, the great commandment was to love the Lord? Yeah, it was. Which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in, due, in his due season. The first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And people, what's happening all over America? Drought. Why? People don't love the Lord anymore. You know, what is it now? People go to church and, and say they believe in Jesus because they want a get-out-of-hell card. You ever play Monopoly? They wanted that get-out-of-hell card. That's it. They don't really love the Lord. They don't serve him. And uh, a dear sister in Christ wrote me, and, and, and she says, if, if you really want to know um, if somebody's a sheep, that you look at where they spend their time and where they spend their money. Do they spend their time? Well, that was what she told me. But I thought about it. She's right. Do they watch television, sporting events, soap operas? What do they spend their money on? Do they use it to help the poor? Or do they do do they buy baseball game tickets? You know? Um, buy jewelry. What what do they do with their time and money? And that's very telling. So if you love the Lord, he's going to send you rain. Uh, verse 15, And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Do you know what the Bible says is money? The Bible says that gold, silver, land, and cattle are wealth. We used to have gold coins up until the 1930s when President Rosenfeld, I mean Roosevelt, uh, made it illegal during the Depression. Silver coins were removed from circulation after 1964, back when I could take a silver dime and go to 7-Eleven and buy two large candy bars. Yeah. Do you ever really own land? Think about it. Don't pay your property taxes for three or four years and find out if you owe that own that property. No, you don't. You got to pay rent to the government. You're renting that land that they make you think that you own, but you're in all honesty, you're paying rent to the government for the use of the land. Because when the money fails, or it goes to the mark of the beast, and if you take the mark, you'll, you're will you guaranteed a ticket to hell. But there's going to come a time, if you don't have the mark of the beast, you can't pay the rent on the land, the property taxes. And the sheriff will come and remove you. And if they have to, they'll drag your dead body off the land. Gold, gone. Silver, gone. Land, gone. Do you own cattle? Well, most places uh, are not zoned for cattle, so what wealth do we have? Look in your wallet. Remember Capital One, it says, what's in your wallet? Uh, paper. Paper. There's going to come a day when uh, that paper will be worth less than toilet paper. 
Mark my words. I don't know when, but, you know. So, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. What's wrath? Anger. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. Do you know what kindle means? No, it's, it's, it's not something you read from Amazon. It means something you use to start a fire with. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain. Isn't there drought all over the United States? And he shut up the heaven, and there, that there be no rain, and that, uh, and that the land yield not her fruit. And lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart, and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children. Well, there was a time in America, prior to 1964 or so, when uh, they taught the Ten Commandments in public school. I remember we had Bible reading. We had prayers in Jesus' name in elementary school, at least in first grade. I remember it. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if, if, if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. What nations? The Canaanite nations the satanic seed line. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. People, there was a time when the United States was the most powerful country on the face of the earth. And before that, it was England. You know, England, uh, let me give, give you a little history lesson about England. England broke away from the Vatican. And I know I rag on the Antichrist that are living in Jerusalem, but I am no friend of the Pope. No. But there was a time when Spain was the most powerful country in the world, and it was Catholic. And England broke away from the Pope and decided that they were going to print the Bible the King James Bible. And before that, you know, they had the Geneva. Well, the King of Spain and the Pope decided, no, we don't want this. They, well, maybe not the printing of the King James, but um, I forget his name. The guy that was working on the Bible, um, Tyndale. Tyndale, yeah. But uh, the King of Spain and the Pope didn't want this, you know, the scriptures in the English language. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was English. Might have been Anglo-Saxon back then. You're going back pretty far. So he sent the entire Spanish Armada, their fleet and army. And England wouldn't have had a chance. And England and Spain are not that far away. So, I forget if it was the king or the queen, I think it was the king of England, proclaimed a fast when he heard that this was going to happen. 
and said, everybody pray to the God of heaven to protect us because we don't stand a chance. And they were going to honor the Lord by putting his words into the words of the common man. Well, the Spanish fleet sailed and it was hit by an out of out of season storm and was pretty much destroyed i mean pretty much wiped out i mean it, it was just it was amazing and england was saved and they gave glory to the god of heaven they even printed a coin they said and god blew and the fleet was scattered and it was I think I think Spain lost uh, if I remember correctly it was like 90% of their fleet they lost. Spain ceased to be a world power pretty much from that point. And for the next 400 and some odd years after the battle of Trafalgar, Lord Admiral Nelson you can read about that in history. England for the next 400 years was the prime power in the world. Now, it's just amazing that you know, God honored the United States to break away from England in, you know, 1776, the American Revolution. It's just absolutely unbelievable. But, um, but guess what? Right now, China has more submarines than the United States. China's Navy which 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, China had nothing. They didn't even have a deep water navy. Now they have a naval fleet that rivals the United States. Between China and, the, uh, and Russia, and don't kid yourself, people, Putin is not who you think he is. If you think he's the defender of Christianity, uh, ask me and I'll send you, send me an email and I'll send you pictures of him at the Wailing Wall with uh, his rabbis. Yeah. So, uh, Russia is just playing possum. Gorbachev, which I call him Garbage Chef, he, uh, he said, uh, he told the uh, Russian Congress not to be concerned about this uh, perestroika and what have you. He says, we're going to lull America to sleep and then we're going to smash them with our closed fist. Yeah, we're being played the fools. And just remember, the people that invented communism in Russia, the same tribe is in America. We are going to be, we're going to see horrible things, I believe. So, verse 23. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Now this is the blessings. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness in Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even under the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. And this is where we are today, people. A blessing if, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye, ha which ye have not known. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Morah? For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. 
All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Um, and after this, I think you get the idea, and we'll start, I'll start in the, uh, the New Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Okay, people, blessing for obedience and cursing for disobedience, right? The curses. Um, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, See, when, when we're in persecution, when we turn to the Lord with all our heart and are obedient, well, then he's going to have compassion. Listen carefully. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Listen to this carefully. All right, verse 4. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, the outermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. What does that mean, outermost parts of heaven? Is that talking about people that are up in airplanes? Uh, is it talking about people, space travel? If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost, outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Hmm. You know, that, didn't, that wouldn't make any sense back in the days when that was written, but today, that makes sense. Verse 5. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed and shall uh, possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to have circumcised hearts, not the flesh down there, if you know what I'm talking about. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. Wow! Did you know that God's people have enemies? Yeah, they do. But if you listen to the churches, they'll tell you, well, you know... God loves everybody. No, he doesn't. Read Malachi chapter 1 where he says he hated Esau. And then they'll tell you, well, what that really means is he loved him less than Jacob. But it's the same word where the God where the where the word uh where God says the that he hates lying lips, that he hates hands that shed innocent blood. Uh, that he hates feet that are swift running to mischief, that, and he hates those that bear false witness. Yeah, same word. I guess he loves pe murderers less than somebody that doesn't murder, huh? Yeah, he loves them so much less that he's going to throw them into the lake of fire. That's how much he loves them. Quit listening to Bible scholars, people. Get into the Bible yourself. The Bible will interpret the Bible if you have a King James and you let it, and you read the prayer of James 1 where you ask the Lord for understanding. Ask him not to be deceived. I mean, works for me. You know, I don't claim to be a prophet or any great scholar. I'm just some schmo that read the book a lot and listened a lot, and studied a lot. 
Ask me what the top uh, television program on TV is right now, and I'll go, mm, I don't know, because I don't. You know? Television. No, thank you. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee. Did you know there's people that hate God's people? And on them that hate thee, which persecuteth, which persecuted thee, and thou shalt return and obey, obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers, if, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us? that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Now listen, people. Uh, if you're interested in looking at a church, I strongly recommend what you do is you look at their statement of faith. My statement of faith is that I believe the King James Bible and the um, Nicene Creed. Creed means I believe. And uh, you can look it up. And, of course, the deceivers will try to tell you that it was the Vatican that came up with that creed. Well, no. Nicaea was a, a city in Greece where all the churches got together and sent representatives and hammered out the essentials of the faith. And I'm sorry, the pre-trib rapture was not one of those essentials. And there are Baptist churches that will tell you that if you don't believe in the pre-trib rapture, you're not saved and you're not allowed to be a member of their church. And I never read anywhere where Jesus said, Believe on me in the pre-trib rapture and thou shalt be saved. Deceived people. You know, really. But if, when you look at the um, statement of faith, when you see somebody that says that we believe the Bible as it was preserved in the, when you hear um the original manuscripts or um, the original autographs, when you hear that, what they're saying is that unless they see the Ten Commandments written in stone that Moses brought down from the mountain, that they really don't believe the Ten Commandments because that is the original autographs. That is the originals. We don't have the originals. All we have is copies of 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 copies. Do you get it? I don't have the Ten Commandments that God wrote in stone. But I believe when God said, Thou shalt not kill or murder, that he meant what he said. When he said not to have any other gods before him, that he meant that. But when you see anything that says original autographs or the original manuscripts, what they're doing is sliding it in there so that they can change the Word of God. And they'll tell you, well, you know, when in, uh, I th what is it, Isaiah 7, 14, I think it is, where it says that a virgin shall conceive. Well, you know, that word virgin, it really doesn't mean virgin, they'll tell you, but it just means young woman. Well, guess what? There was a five-year-old girl that gave birth. Yeah. And as I last checked, she was still alive. 
Uh, she gave birth in, in the late, I think in the 1930s. Um, how in the world she got pregnant at five, I'll guarantee it wasn't a virgin birth. But, uh, boy, good thing it wasn't my daughter because I, I'd have found out who it was and they would have, uh, well, I, I, I think you get the idea. They wouldn't have lived too long. I think I would have tortured them first, but... Uh, I mean, five years old, really? And this was recorded in history, people. This is not something make, made up. So, all right. But the Bible says that the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Take your pick. There was a day when the United States chose life and good. But today, except for the remnant, the USSA has chosen death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And here's the punchline. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Oh, let's see. We're going to take a look in Isaiah 3 and verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Now, let's take a look at the book of Psalms 44 and verse 11. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat and hast scattered us, scattered us, among the heathen. Psalms 60 and verse 1. O God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Solomon, who was considered the wisest man that ever lived, said that there is nothing new under the sun, the sun in the sky, which was created by the Son of God in heaven, right? Jeremiah 10 and verse 21. This could be written today. For the pastors, P-A-S-T-O-R-S, -S, you know, ministers, clergy, for the pastors are become brutish, and have not, not sought the Lord, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper. And all their flocks shall be scattered. Oh, yeah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Jeremiah 23, verse 2, right? 
Uh, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 31.10 Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Same word as Gentiles. O ye nations. And declare it in the isles afar off. The isles, the islands. What islands afar off? How about the islands of Greece? The New Testament was written in Greek. How about the isles of the United Kingdom, England, Britain, You know, the people that gave us the King James Bible that God supernaturally protected when the Spanish fleet was going to conquer them and keep them from printing, well, from translating the Bible into English. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He hath scattered Israel, will gather him, and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. Didn't Jesus say he was the good shepherd? Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 50 and verse 17. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria hath devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hast broken his bones. Ezekiel 6, 8. Yet will I leave a remnant, a remnant, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the countries. Ezekiel eleven sixteen and 17. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you to the land of Israel. And that's going to happen one day, people. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel 34, and verse 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Verse 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Now, um, I believe it's the book of Joel that talks about a, a day of darkness, the second, you know, the, the day of the Lord. And I believe that this is, when the Lord comes back in glory, that, that this is what this is referring to. That's my opinion. In Matthew 9, in verse 36, Jesus, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. All right, let's take a look at John chapter 10. Um, I think I've beat the uh, blessings and the curses of the Old Testament to death. I hope so. Sometimes you need to hear it three, four hundred times to, before it sinks in with some people, not everybody. But uh, America is under the curse of God. But in John 10 and verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming 
and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth, because he is in hiring, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. All right, this will be, I'm going to close out with this, and then we're going to start talking about uh, in the next uh, study what to look for in well, we're going to look at deficiencies of pastors and false teachings of churches. But in John 10, verse 23 through 29, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us, plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And that, people, is the Good Shepherd. All right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.